Hi everyone, welcome. I wanted to take you through a quick tutorial on how I set up my vocal microphone for live streaming. I'm a music streamer, so I also have it set up to add reverb and different effects so that I can perform music and then also have it where I can just turn it on and off to this more normal sound for speaking. So you could use this for podcasting, gaming, IRL, music, whatever. So hopefully this helps you. And just for context, this is a condenser microphone. It's actually handmade by another Twitch streamer. It's just a regular condenser microphone with a pop filter and a shock mount. And I use just a regular Rode boom arm for streaming, but the same concepts can be applied to any other type of microphone, whether it's a dynamic microphone or condenser. I use Ableton Live for music streaming, so we're gonna move over into Ableton and I will show you how I've set up. Okay, so we're in Ableton and just a quick walkthrough of what I have here. Uh, this red track is my microphone. As you can see the meter moving up and down um, there. So I also have a couple other related tracks for music. So I have some guitar tracks, a violin track, and then I have some return tracks over here I wanna talk about as well. So if we're in the microphone, basically the audio from, I just choose that EXT in there, and then you're gonna select whichever input corresponds to your microphone, which in my case is four. And then under monitor, I have my microphone set to in, and I do that with my other instruments as well. They're turned off right now so that they're not creating noise in the background. I'm gonna set that to in, and that allows you to hear your microphone, hear your sound, whether it's your guitar or your mic or whatever, in your headphones, in real time with uh, really low latency, which just as a side note, if you're having issue with latency, go to options preferences. You can kind of play around here. You wanna check your sample rate, make sure it's set to, um, like for me, I use 44.1 and I just make sure it's also set to the same thing in Focusrite Control, which is my interfaces software. So you set that to match the other one. You have to make sure they match. You're gonna get weird sounds. Also for latency, go into this buffer size. I have mine set to 128 samples because that's what my computer can handle, which gives me about 15 milliseconds of latency, which is pretty good. You don't end up with any delay or anything weird. So just check that. You can kind of play around with your buffer size. Try to get it as low as possible, but it just depends on how much your computer can handle. Anyways, moving over back here. So in is going to allow you to hear what you are saying or playing in real time in your headphones. If you set it to auto, as long as you have the recording arm button activated there, you're gonna be able to hear yourself in your headphones. But as soon as you deselect that, you're not gonna hear yourself anymore. And then obviously same goes for if you choose off, you're not gonna hear anything. I keep mine set to in so that I can hear it at all times. And I also do that for my instruments that I'm gonna be playing at the same time that I'm singing. So audio two, you're gonna to set to master so that it goes to the master track, which is how you're going to send your audio from the master into OBS studio software or OBS software. Down here you have your sense. So I use A and B for my reverb and delay. Here are the corresponding return tracks. I use Valhalla Vintage Verb for the reverb. And then I also have a little EQ on here, which I'll explain later. And then I use just a stock delay from Ableton with an EQ as well. Here you can map, so A is set to Valhalla Vintage Reverb. So we're gonna turn this up and you can just kind of choose whatever sounds right for what you want. And obviously same goes for the delay. And then I've actually MIDI mapped mine to my stream deck so that I can just hit a button, turn it on, turn it off. And if you select MIDI up here and you select this, see uh, dot 118. So that shows that it's mapped to that specific button. Come over here, it's highlighted here. See that CC 118. And then I have it set to about 15.6. Uh, so you can kind of just set it to whatever you want it to be at when you're singing. And then just make sure that the minimum is set to nothing and then maximum is whatever you want to set it to. So when you turn off the MIDI, and do that, it's gonna be set to your perfect settings that you have every time. So there's that. I guess to explain this, I have my reverb set up here. I actually just choose a preset because it's easiest for me. Set my mix to 100% so I can control the intensity with the return tracks. So that's how I do that. And then you wanna make sure that the volume is set to maximum here on the return track, same for the delay. And so with the delay, same concept, you're gonna have it set the dry wet to 100% so you can control the intensity with that return track. So as far as the EQ, I cut out all of the lows down here after about 100, see where the 100 is right there? I cut those out because they were just causing muddiness in the mix and they didn't need to be there. So I did the exact same thing for the delay as well, as you can see there, and it just really helps clean up any of that muddy 
noise that doesn't need to be there. That's the return tracks. So now we can get into the actual effects for the mic. The first one I have on here is called RX7 Voice Denoise. It's a plugin that I purchased, which you don't have to purchase something, but I really, really, really love the software. It's super, super useful, especially with a condenser microphone. Like as you can hear, there's some construction going on outside right now, which you can still hear it even with the voice denoise, but it would have been so much louder without it. So it makes a big difference if you're using a condenser mic. And then there's also other tricks you can do in the room to sound treat it. You can use rugs, curtains, sound panels, anything you can to try to deaden the room and make it less echoey. But this definitely helps as far as cutting out a lot of that background noise. There's plenty of stuff out there, free plugins and stuff like that too that you can use as well. So this is the one that I use and I have it set to music and I have the filter type set to gentle and I just kind of play around with this until a lot of the noise is cut out. I'll actually demonstrate there's a fan in this room. I usually have AC on. Just any other noise that happens, it's gonna pick up like the sound of your computer being on. So this, this is what it turned off, makes a huge, huge difference in this, the quality of your sound. So try to find something like that. Uh, then after that, I have my EQ, which I actually just use a preset for this as well. Just choose a preset that you like that's kind of close to what you want, and then you can kind of tweak it around. So as a general rule of thumb, at least for a female vocal and for myself, everybody's gonna be different depending on your microphone, depending on your room, depending on your voice. I cut out anything that is in this range here past the 100 mark. And then I do a scoop here. You can be really particular about it and cut out the specific spots if you want, or you can just do a kind of a scoop, which is sometimes just easier and sounds more natural. So I just do a scoop around two to 300 decibels and then I always do a little bit of a bump after 1000 up here just to give it a little bit more of that airy whistly whispery whatever you want to call it to give it like some color and some life to your voice and everything under 100 over here just you don't need that it just it's the same concept as the reverb and delay it just causes noise and muddiness in your mix so you don't like that especially if you're doing looping or if you're playing with the guitar you want to kind of set up these effects so that it doesn't just get too muddy then after the EQ, I have a compressor. We'll just close those to make it easier to see. Actually, let's just close all those. I use the CLA 76. This is what it looks like. This is also another plugin that I purchased, but you can use stock plugins from Ableton or you can find free plugins too as well online. So as far as this goes, you can look up a lot of tutorials on how to do this online of how to set up the compressor, but this is also gonna depend on your voice and everything around as well and your microphone. But generally, you want to set this input till where the, the dial is going from about negative three to negative five in that range. On the output, that's just going to bump up the gain. So it's going to make up for any gain that you lost. You're just going to do that to make it match your initial volume that you had. And the attack, I just set that to three and release is set to four. And I also play around with this in this, this ratio here, I'll set it to eight or four, just, I don't know, I kind of play around with them and just switch back and forth. A lot of this stuff comes from just trial and error and just trying it out and seeing what sounds best to you. In general, that's how you would set up your compressor. I also play around too with swapping these two. Sometimes it sounds better to have the compressor before the EQ or the other way around. Just kind of play around with it, see what sounds better to you. And then just some other fun effects that I add on just to give it more color. I use the OTT plugin, which is just stock with Ableton. You might have to have Ableton Suite for it, I'm not sure. But yeah, I use this OTT plugin. I actually have it just as it is with the preset, I think. I don't think I even really tweaked it. I think I might've turned down this output here a little bit. And then I also played around a lot with the amount. So I have it set to literally 1%, but you can really turn it up and kick it up a lot, which that really just depends on, you know, your style of music and what you, what you want your microphone to sound like. So play around with that. I also use the saturator. It's called a bit warmer. And again, another Ableton free plugin. And that one, I changed the drive a little bit cause it can add a little bit more distortion to the vocal, which is kind of cool and um, play around with the dry and wet and just kind of try to find somewhere you can have hardly anything or you could really kick it up um, and notice more. I can't really notice with these headphones on. You want to use good headphones for this, but see if you kick it up here in the drive, it will kind of make it more distortion and 
Yeah, it saturates it. So the dry and wet, you can play around with that as well and see how much you want in there. Another fun effect that I use is chorus. And I actually will just keep a little tiny bit of chorus on all the time. And then just for an effect when I'm singing, if there's a certain song that I want to have some chorus, I will MIDI map a button to just kind of kick it up a little bit. So maybe I want that just as a fun effect in a song. It sounds kind of cool in certain songs. So as a basic, just for my microphone, the chorus can add kind of a fullness to your voice if you just use a little bit of it. And then I have a reverb. This is a second one on my microphone track. See, remember we have this Valhalla one over here as return. This is for singing. So if I turn that on, that's gonna activate the Valhalla. But this one is actually activated by a dial that I have MIDI mapped this dry wet down here. I've MIDI mapped it to my APC 40. There's a, a dial here that I can just turn and I can add more reverb. So let's say I'm doing a song, like I do looping so I can just be singing and playing around with dials as I go. And maybe there's like one word that I just wanna give it just a little bit, you know, just for a second, just turn it up and turn it back down. So that's really good for that. I also have the same concept with delay. So maybe Wait, I wanna have just one spot in the song like there's maybe there's one word that I wanted to just kind of do that for a second. It's just a fun effect as I'm as I'm performing a song. So I do that with the reverb and delay. And again, those are totally separate from the these tracks over here. So another fun effect that I like to play around with is this radio sound, which I also have mini mapped. This one's also another cool effect. Um, you can kind of use it. You could use it for a whole song if you wanted to, or just kind of play around and use it for maybe an intro of a song, or maybe there's a bridge of the song that you want it to be a little bit different sounding. I would do that. So that's the radio. And that's actually just a preset from Ableton as well that I've just added on there. This next effect is super fun to play around with. I do this sometimes in songs. So I just set up this track really quickly. It's just like a saw um, synth. So you set this up and then if you go into your mic settings, so you want to check external and then audio from, select whatever that saw, you know, synth is up here, select it down here and then do post FX. And then once you turn it on, and you can mess around with the dry wet and also the depth. I like to turn the depth down. It kind of has a cool effect if you do that. So that's how the vocoder works. That's really fun to play with in songs. And I just have it MIDI mapped to turn on and off like that. So <laughs> that's how I do that effect. And that pretty much sums it up. So I use the same effects. Um, see, these ones are just turned off. And reverb and delay, I keep them on. But all these effects that I've shown you, they all are going to work whether you're just talking or you're singing. So Really the only difference is that I turn off my reverb and delay when I'm just talking and then everything else stays the same. That basically sums up how I do my microphone. So if you like this video, leave me a like and a comment. If there's anything that I might have missed in this tutorial that you have a question about, feel free to leave it in the comment section. I'll try my best to help you out. I also have more tutorial videos on my channel, so subscribe to my channel for more of those and music related content too. If you're interested in how I use this in an actual music performance setup, check out some of my music videos that I have on my channel. And I also live stream on Twitch. So come by sometime. I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you have any questions too, you can always ask me there. Check out my channel for more stuff. And with that, I will see you in the next video.